Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to focus on writing about usability results. In fact, we've got 20 tips for you to keep in mind as you begin writing about your usability testing. So let's jump right in. Tip one, explain the purpose of your usability testing. It is important to remind your readers why you conducted usability testing. Now, this isn't any great mystery. The purpose, of course, was to uncover possible usability problems. However, it's important for the flow of your paper to remind your reader of this fact. So we've highlighted an example of what this might look like. Here, the author wrote, the usability study evaluated the usefulness of the instructional design by collecting qualitative and quantitative data to guide revisions of the prototype before the learning assessment was administered. This is an excellent example because it is stated right in the first sentence of the section and directly reminds the reader about the purpose of the usability testing. Tip two, be sure to reference any tables or figures. This is part of APA style and the idea is quite simple. If you have a table or figure in your paper, the body or narrative of the paper needs to reference that table or figure. Here's an example highlighted in yellow. In total, participants shared 28 comments related to the usability of the online module. Opening parenthesis, table one, closing parenthesis. Here, the author is telling readers that if they want more information about those 28 comments, then they should refer to table one. Tip three, include percentages in parentheses. One thing that's frequently encountered when working with evaluation results is the need to report counts or frequencies. In other words, to tell readers how many times something happened or the number of times X was observed. Well, whenever a count or frequency is reported, it is customary to also provide the relevant percentage. Let's look at the highlighted sentence for an example. 14 or 50% of those comments were positive in sentiment and 14 or 50% were negative. In this example, you can see that 14 is 50% of the total number of comments. You could think of these percentages as doing the math for the reader, making it just a little bit easier for them to make sense of your results. Now, the fourth tip is to spell out some numbers in your narrative. According to APA, whenever you start a sentence with a number, that number should be spelled out. As you can see in the highlighted example, two participants expressed confusion related to the button taking users to the home page. Notice that the word two is spelled out here. That's because it starts a sentence. Other times you should spell out numbers is when the numbers are less than 10. You can use numerals for anything higher. And you should also spell out numbers anytime they are part of a heading or subheading or when you are writing a common fraction, such as one half or two thirds. Tip five, quote insightful comments. Many of you will have qualitative data in the form of written responses or transcribed audio. If one of your participants said something really insightful or unique, you may decide that you want to include that quote in your narrative, and that can be a good idea. Just be sure to make it clear that these are not your words, by writing something like one participant explained or another participant stated and follow that with a direct quote using quotation marks. The purple highlight shows you an example of how this could work. Tip six, as much as possible when writing in a formal academic style, we want to encourage you to use the third person voice. This isn't a hard or fast rule, but in general, writing tends to sound more formal and objective when it uses the third person voice. So instead of writing, first I did this, and then I did that, it is suggested to refer to yourself as the author, the designer, or the researcher. It doesn't really matter what label you choose to refer to yourself, but it is important to pick one label and use it consistently throughout your paper. You could see an example of this in the highlighted sentence. Tip seven, put additional information into appendices. This tip is pretty self-explanatory. Your projects are complex, and as a result, you're gonna have more information than you could possibly include in your results section. That's okay. You can use your appendices as a backup location for all of the details related to your usability testing. 
you'll have to make careful decisions as to what you want to include in the main body or narrative of your paper, because you only have so much room. However, if you want to include more detail, simply put that information into an appendix. And of course, if you include something in your appendix, then you need to reference that appendix in the relevant section of your narrative. As you can see here in the highlighted text, this is an example of how to direct reader's attention to a specific appendix for more information. Tip 8. This tip has to do with styling and formatting of any tables that you build. In this class, we want you to follow APA style, and that means there are specific guidelines for how to format tables. Specifically, you should write a descriptive title for each table. Second, you should include the sample size somewhere in the table. In addition, APA style requires that tables use horizontal lines only. In other words, no vertical borders. And all of the decimal places of the numbers in the columns should be aligned. By following these guidelines, you can make it easy for readers to make sense of your tables. Tip 9. If you're talking about the usability tasks that you asked your participants to do during your usability testing, it's important to remind readers of what those tasks were. Many readers will not remember what task one, for example, is if they read about it earlier in your paper. So to make it easier for them, simply restate what that task was. In this highlighted example, we see a very clear statement about the task being discussed. Task 1 required the participant to find an example of how to approach a difficult patron. That simple sentence is all that is needed to remind readers what the subsequent results are all about. Tip 10. When reporting your results, you will often need to share means or averages. In formal academic writing, anytime you report averages, you need to include the standard deviation, or the amount of variation around a mean. You should report any standard deviations in narrative form and in your tables. So let's take a look at the highlighted sentence. Task 1 had an average score of 4.33, and then you could see in parentheses the standard deviation equals 0.45. Task 2 had an average of 4.76, and in parentheses the standard deviation equals 0.38, and Task 3 had an average of 4 and a standard deviation of 1.00. So, a few things to notice here. First, take note of how the standard deviations are always in parentheses immediately following the reported averages. You don't need to write out the word standard deviation. Instead, you can just use an abbreviation, SD. Also, notice that there's a leading zero if when the standard deviation is less than one. Finally, when reporting standard deviations, use two decimal places to keep things consistent. Tip 11, use a four number summary. Now, a four number summary is a really easy way to report data to readers in a table format. You can see in the highlighted table that it's called a four number summary because four different numbers are being reported, the mean and the standard deviation, as well as the minimum and maximum values of the responses collected. A couple of other things to keep in mind when creating a four number summary are one, to use two decimal places even if the number ends with a zero. This makes the numbers line up nicely and look consistent. And two, if you have a standard deviation or an average that's less than one, you should add a leading zero to the front of it. The reason is to keep everything lined up nicely so it's easy for readers to scan. Tip 12, acknowledge if changes were made. After conducting a usability test, it is expected that you're going to revise your instructional product. So your narrative should acknowledge if and when changes were made. This can be done with a simple sentence such as the one highlighted here in green that says, when possible, changes were made between rounds to help improve the site and instructional content. Of course, if you were to read more of this paragraph, you would find the author provides more detail about the specific changes made. The point here is the importance of acknowledging and describing any revisions made to your instructional product between rounds of usability testing. Tip 13. If your usability test involved multiple rounds or iterations, then it's important to break up those results using subheadings. This can signal to your reader that you're talking about a specific round or iteration of your testing. 
This is only needed if you had multiple rounds of testing. If you collected all of your data from participants in one round and then analyzed all of that data at once, then you don't need to include these subheadings. Tip 14, use figures strategically. We all know the expression, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, in a master's paper, a figure related to your usability results can also be worth a thousand words. Think carefully if a figure can help convey important information to readers. When done well, a figure in the form of a chart can provide tons of information efficiently and effectively. In this particular example, we could see a very easy to read vertical bar chart with stacked columns. And highlighted in yellow, we can see how the author refers to that figure in the narrative. This author wrote figure six illustrates table one's data. So this author decided that a figure could help elucidate the information contained in table one and properly reference the figure in the narrative. Tip 15, emphasize before and after. We've talked about this quite a bit, but we really want to underscore the power of using screenshots to tell the story of your instructional product. Providing readers with before and after images of how your instruction changed is an excellent way to help them visualize any revisions made. Now, you may not have a lot of room in your narrative to highlight all of the visual changes made, but that's okay. You can include an appendix dedicated to highlighting all of your usability changes. Tip 16, use visuals to highlight changes. Sometimes when you make changes to your instructional product in the context of a usability test, those changes can be quite subtle and difficult for someone unfamiliar with your project to discern. A good way around this is to use highlights or signaling arrows, such as this red rectangle, to showcase what was actually changed to the instructional product. The principle here is simple. Just make it as easy as possible for your readers to understand what parts of your instruction actually changed. Speaking of changes made, tip 17 is to document all changes in your appendices. Here's an example of three pages from a past student's appendix. It's a bulleted list describing all of the changes that were made as a result of the usability test findings. This is excellent documentation, and notice that some of the bullets use words only, while others include links, and still others include screenshots. This is a great example of how to document your usability journey. Tip 18. Use the Academic Phrase Bank. We introduced Manchester University's Academic Phrase Bank back in LTEX 687, but we just wanted to remind you about this invaluable writing resource. As a reminder, the phrase bank breaks down writing into its different functions and gives you lots of examples and sentence starters to help you write in a similar academic fashion. There are examples related to classifying and listing, describing quantities, giving examples, and signaling transition. And those are all things you will likely need to do while writing up your usability results. Tip 19 is related to APA style, and we really want to encourage you to study Purdue's Online Writing Lab, or the OWL. One of the useful things they have on that website is an APA-aligned table checklist. This checklist asks a number of questions that you can use to ensure that your tables are A, necessary, and B, if they are, formatted correctly. And that brings us to our final tip, tip 20, which is to use the figure checklist available on Purdue's online writing lab. Just like the table checklist, this one provides lots of guidance on how to format your figures properly so that they align with APA style. So there you have it, folks, 20 tips on writing about usability results. Thanks for watching.